Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Photo Critique. I'm Toby. And I'm Christina. And welcome to a Thanksgiving edition. Sure. Where, here's what we're going to do for the pictures. We're going to either say turkey or stuffing. And we'll let people decide whether turkey or stuffing, which one's good. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. That was a plan, and in my head at one point it sounded like a good idea. Yeah. But maybe we'll just stick with the original, which is the critique. Uh, we got five images we're going to critique today. Uh, these are these were submitted way back in October, October 28th. We're working our way through that folder of submissions, and we're about halfway through. We're going to try to pick up steam after the holidays, but for today we're going to keep this short and sweet because, honestly, we've got some grocery shopping to do. Yes, we do. We do. So let's jump right in, because no one cares about our grocery shopping, and talk about Jeff, Jeff Smith's shot here. Now, I'm going to go first and just say that it's a very cool shot. This light post on this old wall with a little bit of context of down here. We've got this plaza sign, um, you know, so we know we're someplace in Europe. And uh, it's just, it's got a lot to it. I like that. And that feels like a picture on its own. And then as you drift around this image, you notice that there's a person up in the window, a silhouette of a person. Uh, it's just really neat. But this part of the image is so strong that I think this gets lost up there. Yeah. I... I, yeah. I, almost, I feel like we've got two, two separate and potentially strong images here. But when put together... It muddles it a little bit. I disagree. Okay. I think, I do agree that, you know, that the bottom part of the image is overpowering of the top of the image. But I don't think that you should separate these two images. I think that this is a really cool image. I think to me, one of the things that strikes me is that it is so dark above this light. So dark. That's, it's kind of crazy how dark it is. Um, but more so... I can't decide whether the fact, so I didn't notice that until you pointed it out to me, um, which I found. What, didn't you notice the person the up The person above? up at mm. the top until you pointed it out to me. And when I did notice, I thought it was really cool. It's like, whoa, you know, that's almost eerie. Mm -hmm. You know, I mm -hmm. liked being surprised by that. So I'd say maybe tone it down a tiny bit, but just the slightest, slightest bit. I love the composition. I think the composition is great. I love, you know, there's enough context to know where we are. And I I like this image. Um, I don't think they sh it should be separated, but I do think that either you should make the, uh, the window just a little bit brighter or dim that light out just a little, little, little bit. Okay. But I love, I love this. This is really cool. I think it's a really neat image. Um... I'd, I'd be curious. I'd probably complain if I was shown just the top that there wasn't enough context. I do want to just point out that I think, Jeff, you have the distinction of being one of the first people to have submit a geotagged image. And here it's come through cool. so we can see exactly where this image was taken. And I wonder how you did that uh, because the 70D doesn't have GPS built in. Maybe you, after the fact, tagged using Lightroom or some other way. There's lots of fun ways to get that information in. All right. Thank you so much. Moving on to Jonathan's Spring. Now, a couple things, a couple negatives stand out to me right away with this image. Uh, the first is that this bright, maybe it's the corner of a deck chair or something over here. It's bright, it's making a triangle, it's in focus enough that we can see it's something. Um, two, that's one. Two, we've got the flower dead centered. And three, the railing in the background is out of focus, but still not enough that, I mean, you know, there's clear intersections with the light and the flower. So I wanted, I checked, what, what, what aperture were you shooting at? F4.5. What was that? What, what aperture was available to you, Jonathan? And I looked down here, you're shooting with a D5300 and a 50 millimeter lens at F1.8. Now, as a kind of trolley person commented on one of my videos the other day, you know, try not blurring the crap out of every background of every image. 
and it was it was on one of my recent reviews of prime lenses and i certainly do not advocate for blurring the crap out of the background of every image but i do appreciate prime lenses to give you the opportunity to when you want and give you the option the you know it's a choice you have and there are some times when that choice makes sense right and here in this case where you have a kind of busier background that doesn't support your image and you have a distracting object on the side, setting a smaller, sorry, a larger aperture to blur that background is going to help your image. So I know I was just talking for a lot and I'd say a lot, but basically I think you should have chosen an aperture around F1.8, F2, F2.2, somewhere in that general vicinity. Yeah. I don't, this photo does not have a lot of impact for me because, well, one of the, besides the obvious top triangle on the left and then the intersecting lines, which, you know, there's just, there's a lot going on in this image. I, th the light just isn't great. Um, you know, I would have shaded this plant. I would have found a different perspective. Um, it's just... It's nice because it's isolated, but it's also, you know, it's not quite there, in my opinion. And, you know, I don't think that the, the flowers are dead center. To me, they're just off to the left, just slightly. Not enough to be mm -hmm. intentional, um, but not enough to be... Uh, it's just, yeah, I, I, I'm not in love with this photo. Yeah. Uh, just what, oh, one more thing. You commented on light. I... If capture time is to be believed, and I think it's supported by the light, it does look like we're around midday sun, right. which is, is tough to deal with. And and shading it, um, it would be one way to deal with it as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, yep. just stand in front of it, you know, between between the sun and the flower. Yeah. That can be. And then, oops, we were talking about rule of thirds, and it's a little off center, but, you know, we could come well, over in this general vicinity. And yeah, I think you could also just not, not stay true to the aspect ratio and just crop to the left, you know. You don't have to stay true to the, oops, to the aspect ratio always. You just crop that way. Mm -hmm. yep. And we could warm it up as well too and post a little bit, um, which helps a little takes a little bit of that blue flatness away. But still, as Christina said, a lot going on here. Uh, the aperture could have helped, uh, but also moving the plant, because I think it's a potted plant on a deck, could also help as well. Thank you. Now. My comment about this is this looks like an awesome desktop background if you're a scientist that studies flies. Yeah. An insectologist, which I don't think is actually the term. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's just such a very clean um, look. And the other thing that I'll point out that I really love is just how amazingly shallow the depth of field is you are working with here, JCB. Yes. Um, with, you know, the eyes are in focus, which we always talk about. If there's a creature with eyes, they almost always should be in focus in the and shot. And a lot of them are. And a lot of it is. Um, and you can see how it very quickly gets out of focus in the background. Till, you can tell those are the wings back there, but getting out of focus quickly. Yeah, I like this image for those reasons too. My only issue with it is that the black and white. I, I, that is not, it's not working for me in this image. I think it's just a little too... Um, I, I keep coming to the word flat, but I don't think that's the right word. It's just not dimensional enough for me, I think, which is the opposite of... Well, no, no, I guess that, that does... It does fit in with flat. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, composition is great. I, I agree that it would make a good desktop background. Um, the vignette I also don't love. So there's, there's this about vignette... And then there's this clearly pretty blown out, it looks like to me. Maybe just the angle that I'm looking at it from makes it feel... Yeah, yeah so it's not blown yep. out. Um, yeah, it's just too it's too bright here and too dark here. And I don't really have a very logical reason for not being in love with that. But um, 
But I do agree with that the sharpness is really cool. Yep. And just draw attention to the fact that it's shot at f11. And so here right. we are, you know, a picture a second ago um, at f4.5, and so much is in focus. But when you get s super close and working on these more macro scales um, or micro scale, uh, f11 means so much less. Yes. Which is fun. Um, do you think color w would... I would like to see it in, like color. See it in color. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's what's tricky. I know a lot of times with some of these bugs is that they can be so much so funnily colored or strangely colored that right. it can almost be um, yeah. some distracting. But overall, very nice. Let's see if you can find somebody who wants to put it as their desktop background. So I guess I should start with I am not. I guess I should disclose. I'm not a big fan of these types of pictures. Um, I feel like they're a little... Well, what do you say that? Pictures of pregnant ladies? No, no. Okay. You hate pregnant ladies? Good point. Good point. Okay, I should be more specific. So, yes. So, the, it's the, like the blocks on top of the belly kind of shot, um, you know, hand in hand with like the shots of like the fingers making the shape of a heart in front of the belly. I feel like those are a little, I don't know. They're a little cheesy to me. Um, they can be very cute. They, I'm defense. sure that there are a lot of people that think that mm -hmm. they're cute. I don't love them. Um, well, here, without going down this a deep philosophical road, I think one of the reasons you might not like them so much is that I, I feel like they're kind of a current thing um, that that will date pictures. And people didn't do this kind of thing a few years ago, and they probably will kind of not do it in a few years down the road. Right. And one of the reasons, one of the things that you try to create with your pictures are very timeless images that look beautiful now and will look beautiful to grandkids when they're looking at them. Sure. But also, you know, it's like that those types of pictures that, like, people see on Pinterest and they're like, oh, let's do this, let's recreate this picture. So instead of, like, creating your own original picture you're trying to recreate this photo that's already been made a million times and it's just not that original mm -hmm. and it does date itself pretty quickly and but anyway okay. play, but playing the nice guy i'll play the nice guy and in defense family and friends they love this because to them this is you who you people mean something to them seeing this picture and so it's special to them sure okay sure i'll give you that so so now everybody knows what the places we're coming from <laughs> I'm coming from a very cold place of hearted hate. <laughs> hate. Oh, you and you're coming strong. from the best place ever. Okay. No, but really, so setting all that aside, um, and I guess I'm trying to disclose my bias so that, you know, the f critiques that I have for it, um, so that so that I keep that in perspective as I'm critiquing the photo and don't think, well, is this because I just don't like these types of pictures or am I saying this because the picture actually could improve from this, you know, from this. So if that makes sense. Anyway, going on to the critique. So one of the th things that I really do love about this picture that strikes me the most is um, there is some light coming from the background that's just hitting these blocks from an, at an angle that make the picture really dimensional and very um, just kind of bright and and pretty. Um, so I, I really like that. I like the light. Um, the photo looks fairly, you know, it looks pretty balanced to me in terms of temperature. Color temperature looks good. Um, the background isn't super blown out. So while it does seem like it's sunny out or there's a bright light behind the photographer has done a really good job of making sure that the background is not super brightly lit and that the subject is, you know, in a spot where there's good enough light. So I, this is a great photo for those reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but, I'm oh, sorry. Well, maybe you want to talk about this because we did discuss this picture before we started mm -hmm. uh, recording. And one of the biggest issues that we both have with it is that the limbs are cut off. And that's just a little distracting. So there's a little triangle yeah. arm whoops, down here, and then there's like the pinky is cut off and we don't see an elbow, so it's kind of like a floating limb right there. Um, and, and I guess going back to the reason that I don't love these pictures is I don't know how I would recreate this in a way that does not cut off limbs, that gives enough of a, you know, context without cutting off limbs. 
um, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So maybe it is because of my bias because I don't love these pictures that I can't really think, you know, outside of the box to try to put a bit together a better photo. Um, but right. Well, I think I think the first thing I would try is have have the um, the woman uh, bring her hand and arm up a little bit and maybe wrap it around the belly under the H. Yeah, I think that's because I think the framing is good here, other than the fact that this arm is cut off. Yeah, um, I think we're including enough to know that we're looking at a very pregnant woman um, and don't need to see more. But we could also see more. So you could include the person's head and shoulder and arm and elbow as well. I just agree with the light. It's, it's wonderful, perfect on these blocks. Also talking about backgrounds, out of focus or in focus, just enough to tell that we're in this kind of yard with a white picket fence, which I think adds to the story of like perfect childhood with colored blocks. And I, I think all of that works really well. But the, the cut off arm, um, really bothers me yeah uh, so agreed yep cool nice thanks and rolling on to the last one that we're going to talk about today so this image is is um so i have a reputation and people keep reminding me of it of really disliking sunset pictures but i can't recall a picture in the last however many critiques that i've really disliked because it was a sunset so I don't, I'm not a disliker of sunsets. I'm disliker, I'm a disliker of, just pregnant ladies. of people, <laughs> of pictures that are taken because there is a sunset. Not because there's a beautiful scene and the sun just happens to be setting so it's the right time of day, but because the sun is setting and that must be a good picture. That, that's where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay. I think so the answer. Sorry. What was the question? Sorry. Well, the, the, the answer is... No, never mind. Go ahead. Okay. So this is my only critique and change for this photo. That's what I would do. Yep. I, I think this is a wonderful photo. Uh, Jonathan, now you have to, now we can complain about this. Is, this is the person <laughs> whose watermark we've complained about being too close to the edge before. Now we've made it too close to the edge. You have to, fi no, I'm just kidding. Um, it's really nice. Uh, the, the reflection here and the sharpness of it's it very cool. is just perfect. And I also, I like that, you know, you can tell that something amazing is happening over here, but the story is here with the reflection. Yes. Um, and just how it starts to get out of focus here and interacts with the shoreline, the near shoreline. Very nice, perfect exposure that gets the silhouettes, gets the colors. Uh, just really nice. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, agreed. Great. And on that note, so today we had some turkeys, we had some stuffings. We'll let you guys decide which ones were the turkeys, which ones were the stuffings. Okay, we're going back to that, huh? Yeah. Truthfully, I love stuffing. I love them both. Mm -hmm. All right. We will be back next week with another image critique. Keep on rolling through these, and then we will be collecting some more in the future. And, uh, yeah, continuing. Thanks so much to everybody who submitted and put themselves out there to be critiqued today. Love hearing back from people whose images we critique uh, who sometimes make edit, make changes based on the suggestions or maybe take a whole new picture and show it to us, uh, feel free to do that. Leave in the comments links or come over on Facebook and comment underneath the posts for these videos. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye.